Hello, hello. So in my first uh, Selenium video, I showed you how to set up Selenium for the first time and to input data. In this video, we're going to do a little bit of the opposite in showing you different ways to grab data or HTML code from a page. Um, in my last video, also, uh, I had logged into Facebook using uh, the script that I had built. If you have your usernames and passwords stored in Chrome, when you do launch your Selenium version of Chrome, a lot of that data gets lost, so you're having to re-log in. I actually did find a way to do that, so let's go ahead and take a look at that first. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, in Chrome, you're going to want to take this text here, which is just Chrome slash slash version slash and you want to input that into Chrome, and you're going to get this page. So you can just put it up here in the URL and push Enter. And what you're looking for here is your profile path. And that's just going to say where all that kind of user data is stored that you have saved. So then you're going to copy this, go back to your code. And I do have all this commented out just because I'm not going to show it. I don't want my personal data really showing up there by accident on the video. But uh, you're going to do kind of what I did in the first video. If you haven't seen that, check that out. But you're going to uh, call upon a com or create a com object uh, with Selenium, Chrome driver. And obviously, if you're using something different, you're just going to change this up from Chrome to, you know, Internet Explorer, Firefox, so on. The next thing you're going to do is driver.setProfile. And you're going to copy that path that you just got from Chrome right here. And what that's going to do is every time you launch a Selenium version of Chrome, it's going to load your profile for you so you're not losing all that, uh, you know, default autofill stuff that you have in your regular Chrome if you want it. And then you can just, you know, have it like go to Facebook.com and you should have your username and password already filled out if that's something you had set up. So I just want to throw that out there because I did not have that figured out in the first video, but I finally got a hold of that. And as always, all this will be in the description below, so you can copy and paste and manipulate how you want. So the first thing we're going to do here, I'm going to push F1. Once again, we're just going to create that uh, com object there with uh, Chrome. That's our Chrome driver that I showed you in the first video. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to Facebook.com. And... Um, I grabbed a element ID right here, reg page message, and that is just uh, just a chunk of uh, text that's on there. You'll see uh, it when I launch this. But all that is is really just I'm saving variable one uh, as driver, whatever it finds in this element here, ID, get element or find element by ID. And the attribute I want is just whatever the inner text is. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that. And then I'm going to push F1. It's going to go ahead and create that com. Open up Chrome. Let's refit this real quick. And uh, there's that little message box, create a page for a celebrity, band, or business. And that's where that's grabbing that. That's what that ID was. It's just this basic text right here. So that's a great way to grab text even if it's not like in a box or anything like password or email, but you want to actual like from the page uh, wording, I guess you would say. All right, let's take a look at the next one here. Now let's say we do want to get information from an actual text field like the username. Uh, so I've already called upon the Chrome driver up here. So I don't really need that again. It's already been established. It's already connected. I already got the browser up and running. So down here, all I got to do is I'm going to say variable to driver dot find element by ID email, which is that box's uh, ID. And if you don't know how to find that, check out my first video, which I'll also link in the description below for sure. And the attribute I'm looking for is whatever the value is there and just display it in the message box. So let's go ahead and enter just some random information in here. We'll just put tab nation. Click out of it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and push F2. And there we go, tab nation. That's a great way to grab uh, information from a text box for you. Pretty simple. Obviously, uh, if you're not going to be using this first one, 
you would just kind of copy this down here. But since I've already called it up here, I don't need it. All right, and on to the fir third one. So when I press F3 here, we're going to be calling upon the same box there, the email box, uh, the first mention of it. So it's only happening once, so I just need to put a 1 there. But this time for the attribute, I'm looking for the outer HTML. Uh, there's a few reasons you might need to grab this. Probably a little bit less likely that anybody's going to be using this, but you could use this and then possibly afterwards use like a... Uh, regex or a string replace to find certain types of content that you need. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Still got my box open here. So I still have tab nation here, but obviously it's going to grab something a little bit different. It's going to grab the actual outer HTML, which is all this code here. There could be a number of reasons, like I said, that you might want to use it. Uh, I've never really found a use for it, but I just want to throw it out there in case there is a use for you guys. Let me know what you end up doing if you uh, do use this. I definitely would like to know. Maybe it's something I haven't even thought about. Or you can help others in the comments below. So last one we got here. Oh, uh, just to mention up here with the outer HTML, there are a few other options you can do with changing out uh, outer HTML here with text content, inner text, option, or value. Just to kind of uh, show you different options. Uh, a lot of these can be used in other places on the other F uh, function keys that I have already showed you. But I just wanted to point those out real quick before I forgot. All right. So the next one, uh, F4. This is kind of going to do like the exact same thing that F1 did with that same ID there, right there. It's just formatted a little bit different with driver, execute script, uh, a return document, get element by ID and uh, all that, and we're looking for inner text. And once again, you can use outer te or HTML if you want to also. So let's go ahead and push F4. And there we go. We got that um, create a page for a celebrity, band, or business. Once again, just grabbing down there. Uh, both ways, perfectly fine to use. I personally like to use this one up here. I feel it's like a little bit less uh, coding little bit less words, so why not go for that? Um, another cool thing, as you see right now, I just push F4. Your page does not actually have to be activated or the active window. You can call upon it even though it's in the background or it's minimized like I just had there. So I can go ahead and push, um, you know, F2. And there I'm getting that text that was in that box while it was minimized. So that's also very helpful. You can run a page and just kind of have it hidden in the background. Uh, if you don't even want to see this, uh, there is some code I've done in another video where you can set the transparency of a window to 0%, just making it basically invis invisible, except for down on your bar, you'll still see the icon. That way, if you need to close it out manually, you still can. Uh, but that's a really cool feature that I like, you know, when I want to call upon data from a website and I don't even want to see it happen. I just want the answer. This is a great way, kind of like the how with... Uh, Internet Explorer, you have URL download, but with this way, you're not actually having to download a file to your computer, which is super helpful. All right, uh, if you guys have any questions about any of the code in here, definitely let me know. Uh, I will have all this uh, in the description below. Definitely hit that subscribe button. I'm uploading usually about two to three videos every week having to do with auto hotkeys from you know personal use, computers at your work, maybe you want to automate, and a lot of gaming stuff too. I'm a really big gamer. I like trying to find ways to make auto hotkeys work with gaming, which can be very tricky. Uh, so I like to try to challenge myself with that stuff. All right, guys. See you in the next one. Thanks.